Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This summer we've been taking so many camping trips and going to the mountains. Actually right now I'm on a camping trip at the moment as you can see by my lovely surroundings. Anyway, so I thought I would take the opportunity to film a bunch of recipes I've been making to share with my family and friends. So if you're looking for some fun summery snack ideas or just something different to set out at your next backyard barbecue, I've got you covered. Also, I thought it would be worth mentioning that I did make a video like this last year and I will link it down below in the description box. You guys love that one and I love seeing all your recreations over on Instagram. So definitely check that one out next if you're still looking for ideas. If you are just finding my channel today, hi, my name is Megan Fox and I live in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Also, stick around to the end. I will include a little montage of some clips of us camping if you'd like to see more, I don't know, Mennonite outdoor living. So let's get cooking. Okay, I promised there's gonna be some healthier recipes than this in this video, but I just had to start out with this s'mores fudge. It's just the perfect thing to take when you're camping. Even if you're not gonna make a campfire, you still get the flavors of that salty, crunchy, gooey, sweet s'more. And yeah, this s'mores fudge has been a favorite for a long time. You're gonna start out by lining a small container. This is just like, I believe a 10 by 10. Doesn't make a very big batch, especially if you're taking it somewhere to share with a bunch of other people. You want to make sure you don't go through all the work only for a few squares of fudge. So I will be doubling this recipe today, but when you click on the link down below, it will give you a half portion of what I'm making here today. So just keep that in mind. So I first lined a dish with foil, sprayed it with some Pam, and then I got to work making my s'mores fudge. You're just gonna need a few basic ingredients including marshmallows, graham crackers, and chocolate chips, of course. And I'm having so much fun filming in my new kitchen. I know it's not really new, but just that fresh coat of paint, even though it's not perfect, I don't have a new backsplash or anything like that, I'm still loving all the improvements. So you're gonna want to melt your chocolate chips and sweetened condensed milk together, and you can do this over the stove, but I just took the shortcut and did it in the microwave. And I start it every 30 seconds or so till it was nice and smooth. You do not want to overheat it, so make sure you do stir pretty often. And then you're going to remove it from the heat and add the vanilla. And then you're going to fold in marshmallows and graham crackers. But before you do that, you'll have to crush your graham crackers. And you can do that in, you know, a Ziploc bag or whatever. But my daughter, Ivani, she's two, just popped in and wanted to help. So I was happy to have a job for her that she could actually do. Okay. Um, yeah, after you're done crushing them, I promise. Don't eat these ones. I'll give you another one. There. I'll break them into little pieces like this. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Go on. So she was attempting to crush up the graham crackers with her little hands as I got the rest of the stuff measured out and ready to go. A cup and a third. So we're doubling it. Uh, sure. We're doing two and two thirds cups. We're doubling it. It definitely wasn't perfect, so I went back in and crushed them up a little bit smaller. Now you don't want tiny, tiny pieces. You kind of want it like this. You don't want it to be crumbs or anything because you do want to bite into those salty, cinnamony graham cracker pieces, as well as like the chewy, gooey marshmallows. And here I am just folding everything in together. Make sure your chocolate isn't too hot before you do this because you don't want it to completely melt the marshmallows, but you do want the marshmallows to get a little gooey. All the textures and flavors in this is just amazing. And I've said it once before and I'll say it again, a mini spatula is one of the handiest kitchen gadgets to have around. And I finally have my Amazon storefront linked. So if you do wanna see what my favorites are for kitchen or home decor, um, kids items and things like that, don't hesitate to go and check that out. I will link it down below in the description box. And the reason there's foil in here is just so that when we go to cut it, I don't have to cut it in this Tupperware container. I can lift out the fudge and then cut it on the countertop instead of yeah, cutting it right inside of my Tupperware container. I don't want to destroy it. Okay, and then once you have it all packed in, you can go ahead and set it in the fridge so it can set at least for one hour, and then you can cut it into cubes, and after that, it ain't gonna last long. <laughs> After it is cooled in the fridge for at least an hour, you want to get it out and peel off the tin foil. It should come off pretty easily if you sprayed well. And then you just want to cut it into small bite-sized squares. I did double the batch, so you'll see here how thick the squares are. I love when fudge is like pretty boxy, not too much like a brownie, but more like an actual cube. So you'll see here how this looks, um, and that's just how I prefer, but you can do it however. If you use a larger pan or make a smaller batch, your fudge is going to be a lot thinner, just be aware of that. 
And then I arranged them on a pretty dish that my grandma gave me. I remember her serving deviled eggs on this a long time ago. And when she let me pick a dish out, I w grabbed this right away. I love that unique gold tarnished look it had. And so I just arranged it on there for a picture or two, but I ended up putting it back in the container then to take to the cabin so it was nice and sealed and didn't get stale or anything. You have to remember there is crackers in it, so it could have the potential to get stale. So make sure it's in a nice airtight container. I know you're gonna love this one, so make sure you try it and let me know what you think. Okay, I just got back from a Walmart Aldi run and I thought I'd show you what I picked up. You guys know about these already. Love, love them from Appleton Farms. <laughs> what, buddy? Oh, you wanna see too? Okay, let's pick them up. Anyway, and then vanilla wafers. The kids love vanilla wafers. And I got these peanut butter crackers. I think they come in the cheese variety too. Nerds are like a favorite. Glow pops, they're like, per oh I love this. This is like a travel candy. Lollipops that last forever. Here are mini Starbursts. Josh is super into them. <laughs> and these look like an interesting flavor. They're sours. Are you excited for the cabin? Oh, I bought some of these too. They're in the freezer. That just the they're yogurt, the off-brand gogurts. <laughs> also, this does not look like a snack, but it is. My kids eat these for like lunch because when we go to the cabin, we don't have to do lunch as adults. But I like to give the kids, I like to give my kids some meat and veggies if I can, rather than just snacking on snacks all day. Okay, that's not a snack. That's a uh -oh. juice for my. Uh oh, did you spill? Yeah. Uh oh. I want to open it up. Lick it off your hand. Is that okay? I'll get you a washcloth as soon as I'm done here. Actually, I think I am done. That's about all the snacks I got this round. Um, we have plenty of other stuff in the cupboard already, and I'm gonna be making a few things as well. What did you find to be happy with? Are you happy now? Me too. Are you happy? Uh, don't chew on them. No, no, they're not to eat. They're not to eat. Those are toys for the car. So Josh just ran down the road to the car wash to wash his truck off and he took the kids with, so it's just me here. And I'm gonna quickly whip up a batch of seasoned pretzels because we're headed to the cabin this afternoon and I have a ton of stuff to do yet. Um, yes, this is a different cabin trip than I mentioned before. We've been going to the cabin all the time lately. Anyway, if you watched my other snack video, I shared my Dilly Ranch seasoned pretzels. Today I'm gonna to share with you guys a version that takes mustard and lemon pepper, garlic salt, and dill weed, and also a ranch packet. I actually have never tried this recipe, so I don't know that it's gonna be good, but I will definitely let you know at the end. I think it's gotta be good with the ingredients that are in it. Um, and once again, I'm just dumping because that's how I do when it comes to stuff like this. I, use, I like to use my hand for stuff like that, uh, for tablespoon and teaspoon. If it was liquid, I'd probably measure it. One and a half teaspoons dill weed. I just put in the ground mustard, which was three tablespoons. And then I'm really curious to see how this is. Um, it's called for lemon pepper, which when I think of lemon pepper, I think of fish um, or even chicken. So we're gonna see how this is. But this is just a fourth of a teaspoon of lemon pepper, a teaspoon of garlic salt. Okay, then I'm just gonna incorporate all those seasonings into the oil. Looks like lemony and herby. And then I think, I'm not sure if this is gonna make enough for one batch of pretzels or two. By the way, ultra thin pretzels from Walmart are the best. You can use other pretzels if you want, but look how tiny they are and salty. Oh my goodness, so, so good. Drizzle it all in there. Oh, yum. Yeah, I think we're gonna need a few more pretzels. Ugh, there's always that glob in the bottom. I never seem to stir it good enough. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna fold everything together. We'll see if I like these as good as the ranch dill ones because this takes ranch and dill, it just also takes some other fancy ingredients. <laughs> okay, now I'm just gonna add these to a pan. And then I'm gonna put them in the oven like at a low temperature, 200 degrees, and just stir them every couple minutes. And this should only take about 15 minutes or so till they're dry. And you definitely don't wanna walk away too much. Like I'm gonna get ready and make some fruit salsa here next. So I can check on this every couple minutes. Okay, these are delicious. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna keep these on rotation. And let's see what Josh thinks. They are really good. I wonder if he'll like these as much as the Dilly Ranch ones. But anyway. I will put this recipe down below, what I did, 
And I also linked my other snack video where I show you how to make these in a different version. And these store really good in the freezer if you put them in a gallon freezer bag and just store them in there. I find that then you have something ready to pull out if you're having a party or you know a last minute cookout or something, you always have a snack you can bring. Okay, I'm gonna be making some fruit salsa next with homemade cinnamon chips, but before I do that, I haven't really eaten anything proper today yet, so I'm gonna quickly heat up an oat bowl for my breakfast, lunch, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I have been treating myself lately to daily harvest, um, not for the kids and stuff, just for me, because I just love having like quick things that is in the freezer that I can just grab and pull out whenever I need like a meal. I've been finding myself really snacking on chips and things like that. So um, yeah, it's just really nice to have actual meals ready to go in the freezer and they don't take any prep at all on like some um, meal services and stuff. I can't really compare Daily Harvest to anything else I've ever tried because it's just like ready to go. You heat it up on the stove top. I will include some clips here of me making a harvest bowl. I love their harvest bowl so much and also their opals. Um, Daily Harvest is sponsoring this video and they give me a code for you guys and get $25 off um, if you use my link down below in the description box. They have smoothies and flatbreads and things like that, but yeah, my favorites are definitely the Harvest Bowls and the Opals, so if you use my code to buy anything, definitely try them. Today I am making a um, Apple Cinnamon Opal. They have so many good flavors. Um, you can see some of them here on the screen right now. Just make them right like the directions say. For the liquid for my Harvest Bowls, I like to add just a little bit of chicken broth, and then for their Opals, I just sprinkle a little bit of brown sugar on top. So, so good, I'm telling you. Hang on here, I'm gonna make this quick. And yeah, I'll taste test it in front of you guys and then we'll get on to some more cooking. And you can see all the instructions are listed right here on the packaging, but there's like really no prep at all. And then it shows also the ingredients and a lot of them are organic. Yeah, super, super delicious and good for you too. Okay, and then here it is in less than five minutes later. I just sprinkled a little bit of brown sugar on top and I'm just gonna eat this as I get set up to cook some more. <laughs> it's so good. I have tried to make copycat recipes of this, but I've not hit on it at all. Anyway, so definitely use the code down below if you're looking to treat yourself or just to like have some things on hand. Our dishwasher broke recently and so it's so nice. Um, it comes in a bowl and everything like that ready to go. Um, but yeah, thank you Daily Harvest for sponsoring this video. I thought this would be a great video to throw it into because I'm cooking. So, back to it. So, what are some things that you guys like to do when you're at a cabin with family or friends? I know one thing that we love to do is stay up late after the kids are in bed and play card games. And, you know, you need a little bit of a snack to keep you going into the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> And yeah, while cookies and coffee have their place, sometimes you just want something a little more wholesome and like half healthy, but still snacky at the same time. So when I saw this recipe for fruit salsa, I knew that I had to try it and I think it was a hit overall. It's a little bit of work, but it was super good. And I especially love the homemade cinnamon tortilla chips. They were not only pretty, but they were really good as well. So that's what I'm starting with first. I'm making the homemade tortilla chips. And what you're gonna do is basically take flour tortillas and I got the big ones, but you could use the small ones as well. And I just brush them with butter and then a cinnamon and white sugar mixture. So your hands are gonna get messy doing this, so don't worry about that. And you could cut them up however you want to, but I found a pizza wheel to work really, really well. Just slice it right like a pizza and do several at once and you can slice through those really, really quickly. So after you have them all done, arrange them on a single layer on baking sheets and put them in your oven. And then you just want to toast them five minutes and then check them five minutes and then check them. Um, I can't remember exactly how long it took me. It did take a little longer than this recipe tells you, but you want to get them out before they're completely crispy because they kind of, I don't know, shrivel up a little bit or something once you get them out of the oven. So you don't want them quite as crispy as bought chips. You want them a little bit, yeah, just a little bit of give to them. And they're so pretty, like the white sugar on the top caramelizes and just makes the chips look glittery. You could definitely eat these plain as a snack themselves, 
but they're so much better with the fruit salsa. So fruit salsa has nothing to do with actual salsa. I think it's just called that because it's a bunch of different fruits sliced up like salsa is. And you can probably, I'm guessing, use whatever fruits you want to. But for me, I use strawberries, kiwi, an orange or two, crushed pineapple, and then some lemon juice. And I probably should have, the recipe calls for some sugar. I left the sugar out because I was like, I don't need sugar. You know, this fruit has plenty of sugar in it. But I will say, I think it could have used the sugar. After it was sitting there in the bowl for a little bit, it started to taste more sour than sweet. And I mean, I still liked it that way, especially when you serve it with uh, cinnamon chips. But I'm definitely not gonna skip the sugar if I make it again sometime. And also don't forget the lemon juice because that will keep things from getting brown. And then I made my own homemade whipped topping for it. And guys, don't just limit the whipped topping to this recipe. Add it to whatever you want. It is so, so delicious. Basically, I took a whole pint of heavy whipping cream and then I beat it up with some 10x sugar, uh, like a third of a cup, and then also just a drizzle of maple syrup. And it tastes so good. Who needs ice cream when you have whipped topping? Oh my goodness, it's amazing. But yeah, then you just like get in there with your chip and you get the salsa. You can add some whipped topping to it and just go to town. It's a little bit messy, but it's fun to eat. It's just a great late night snack when you need something to chew on, but you don't want to just be eating straight sugar. <laughs> okay, with my messy kitchen in the background and my head chopped off, I'm going to taste this. I don't know how kid friendly this is, but it is amazing. Like, amazing. So, so good. Okay, it's cinnamon chips with fruit salsa and homemade whipped topping. Let's see what the ultimate critic thinks. Oh, here comes Vani. Does Vani want to try it too? Oh, listen to it crunch. See? It's pretty legit. Mm-hmm, that's good. So after you're at the cabin, you're eating junk food and drinking soda and stuff, aren't you gonna crave something like that? Maybe. Oh. Take a bite. Something with a little substance to Open it? Open up big. Take a bite. Bite. Bite it. <laughs> there you go. Juicy, juicy. <laughs> Chew it up. Is it yummy? You wanna eat that? Okay, we have to take some of this to the cabin. Let's not eat it all. And as you can see, Josh loved it too, so no, it's not just a fruity, girly snack. Okay, I am so excited for this next recipe. I think it's probably one of my favorites in this video, and that is a Lancaster County favorite, which is pretzels, and these are soft pretzels, and they're a little bit controversial in my family, and I will explain why at the end, but I have an amazing recipe to share with you, but before I do that, let me share with you the honey mustard dip that I like to make, and as you can see here, I'm being super picky with how I measure out my ingredients, right? <laughs> not but this recipe only takes three ingredients mayo mustard and honey and you want to do half a cup of honey half a cup of mustard and then a cup and a half of mayo and you just mix it all together it gets this really pretty yellow color and put it in a pretty dish if you want or in a sealable container so it doesn't spill on your way to camping but then you need to make the salt pretzel so you have something to dip in this yummy honey mustard. So if there's some lack of continuity in these clips, it's because I did film making this recipe twice. My sister came over, you'll get to see her in a little bit. Yes, I have a sister who is 15 years younger than me, and so she was over helping me out for the day or I was babysitting her. Either way, it was a very beneficial situation for both of us. So first, to make these salt pretzels, you need to put your yeast in warm water. And don't get scared, guys. I know some of you are so scared of yeast, but guys, you can do it. Just keep your yeast in the freezer and keep your water nice and warm, just like a baby's bath water, and you will be fine. So you want to put the yeast in the warm water, let it sit for five minutes, add the salt and the brown sugar, and stir that till it dissolves. And then you're going to add bread flour and regular flour. And if you don't have that, that's completely fine. You can use all-purpose flour. It's completely fine. But I just find that the bread flour gives it a really good texture.
going to mix that all together and knead it till it's nice and smooth. You can get out all your aggressions or whatever. Actually, here today, Josh came home from work and he was full of stories about what he was doing at work that day. So it was fun to listen to him go on. Does anybody else have a husband like mine? Like when they actually get in a storytelling mood, you shut up and listen because <laughs> it doesn't happen every day. Well, yeah. So I really had fun listening to his tales at work. And if you don't know, my husband is a construction worker and I think he was framing up an addition that day. So that was super exciting, but I am getting off topic here. Okay, soft pretzels. So after you have it nice and smooth, then you wanna cover it and let it sit until it is doubled. And then comes the fun part. You take it, you don't have to punch it down much or anything like that. Just, I like to make it into a long roll and then just pinch off a piece as I'm ready for it. And then I roll it out into a long, long snake on the countertop. And here Ivani came and wanted to help me. So I let her quote unquote help <laughs> with that. Yeah. I like my mommy. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> you like your mommy? Have a kiss. And then I just grabbed a pizza wheel. You guys can see I use my pizza wheels for all kinds of crazy things. Here I was just using it to slice the worm, I guess we'll call it, into tiny, small, like barely an inch long slices. And it doesn't really matter if you have some longer than others, but you definitely want the whole thing to be uniformly thick. If they're not uniform, then some of the pretzel nuggets are gonna be raw in the middle yet. So it's very, very important that they're all relatively the same thickness. Okay, and you take them and you dip them in there and you set them on there. Okay, take them for a little swim. Just dip one time, no, 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 don't roll them. Just drop them in and pick them back out again. And I just did these about the thickness of my thumb, maybe a little thicker, and they will rise a little bit as you get the sheet pan full. And I did spray the pan, and I have this one jelly roll pan that just makes everything stick. I don't know why, I should probably just replace it, but I covered it with tin foil and sprayed that, and it seemed to work just fine. But before you place the little pretzel nuggets on the tray, you wanna dip them in a mixture of baking soda and hot water. The purpose of this, at least I imagine, is so that it gets nice and chewy. You know how soft pretzels aren't just bready, they're kind of chewy. So I don't think you want to skip this step, that's for sure. And if you know the exact reason why you dip soft pretzels in a baking soda water mixture, let me know down below. So after they are all dipped and laid out on a sheet pan, you want to sprinkle them with pretzel salt. And I keep my pretzel salt in the freezer right along with my yeast. And here's my sister, her name is Shandon, and she was all too happy to help me. She loves to bake, she's my little soft pretzel sidekick. She's helped me make these many times before. I was so glad to have her. Making soft pretzels is not a very easy one person job. So if you have kids, get them involved, get them to help. There's so many different steps to it, but I love to make a big batch because then it's completely worth it. So. You bake them in the oven at 500 degrees. You want your oven at 500 degrees for salt pretzels. It feels really hot, but it's gonna quickly cook them. That's also why you wanna make sure your nuggets are not just big, giant blobs because the insides will not get done in the middle if they're really, really big. So try to make it look right like mine, and it's not too scientific, you guys. You can do this. So bake them for about seven minutes or until they're golden brown and they will get a little bit browner on the bottom, which I kind of like actually. It makes it a little bit crunchy. Um, it shouldn't be hard or anything. It'll just be like browner. And I think it tastes really good. And then you scrape them off the pan and you dip them in melted butter. I think I used about a whole stick here of melted butter to just dredge these things in the butter. It was so good. You don't want to skip this step. Amazing. Oh, my mouth is watering. Um, and then you can go ahead and dip it in honey mustard. I love cheese sauce. That's a big popular one. Regular mustard, Dijon mustard, um, spicy mustard, brown mustard, whatever you guys like on your soft pretzels. There's so many different things. Now, one time a whole bunch of our friends got together and we just played outside with the kids over this quarantine and we were just all gonna bring a snack. I had nothing in the house, but I did have ingredients to make soft pretzels. So I made a whole bunch of soft pretzels. I took them there and we ate them like room temperature and they were so good. I don't know, there's something about the great outdoors that's just like the best seasoning. Um, they were really, really good lukewarm. So I took them along to my Weaver camping trip with my mom's side of the family. And but anyway, it was a big controversy if these things should be warmed up or cooled or uh, room temperature, whatever. So guys, it's up to you. You can throw them back in the oven once you get to where you're going and just warm them up a little bit if you want to. But I think they're a perfectly good room temperature served out in nature um, with some good dip. I never really considered salt pretzels as a make ahead recipe before, but now I know they can be good at room temperature as well. So go ahead and try it and let me know if you guys like them. It's been a long day. Josh is out mowing. The kids are playing in the sandbox and I'm quickly trying to make something that I've never tried before. So if this is a flop, you guys are along for the ride. Um, I have just recently heard about watermelon jerky and I'm like, that is, sounds amazing. It's like dehydrated watermelon. 
Okay, in this next segment, you are gonna watch me make watermelon jerky. I can't believe, yeah, I never heard of that before, but apparently it's a thing, and I thought it sounded so good and so, like, perfect to take camping, but, guys, I hate to say it, it did not get the Megan stamp of approval, and I just need your feedback. Do you guys wanna see when I fail as well, or is that just a waste of your time? I really loved the idea of watermelon jerky, but when it came down to it, it was just a lot of work, a lot of time in the oven and it just didn't taste that great honestly like it, there was no draw for me to ever make it again so basically i just took a watermelon and cut it into a bunch of tiny one fourth inch thick slivers and then i just laid them on a baking sheet and sprinkled them with chili lime seasoning from walmart i know you can get it different places just a little bit and i put it in the oven to dehydrate at 170 degrees and this took almost 24 hours and in the end, the product was not very appetizing looking. It did not taste great at all. I don't know, I looked at a bunch of different recipes online and I'm guessing maybe I just did the wrong thing. I don't know, it just was not very good. So if anybody actually has a great watermelon jerky recipe, I wanna know about it. DM me on Instagram, cause I just love the idea, but I just can't, yeah, I just can't endorse it guys. It just did not work out for us. And I'm really disappointed about that. So let me know, do you guys wanna see my wins and my losses or is it just a waste of time and you want only the Megan approved food? Yeah, I'd love to know, honestly, I genuinely would. I'm always looking to make my channel better and I wanna give you guys what you want. Whew, well, that was a lot of cooking. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. I would love to see all of your recreations over on Instagram. So don't hesitate to tag me in any of your stories if you share them over on Instagram. I would love to see your recreation of these recipes. I'm so glad that you're here and I would encourage you to subscribe if you found any value at all from this video. And now for a small glimpse into what it looks like when we go camping. This bear was so friendly, it was so close to the cabin and it was big. I was actually getting a little bit nervous because the kids love to play outside and I'm like, would it actually come out if the kids were there? Like. Yeah, it made me a little bit nervous. He's getting real close. There's the cabin. Oh my goodness. I wanna show this to Josh. He's big, actually. I thought he was a little teddy bear. If he takes another step closer, I may just walk away. Oh my goodness, guys. I'm more scared of this yellow jacket at the moment. It's literally going up to the cabin. <laughs> My goodness. Good job. Throw it again. I'll take a video for daddy. You like the turtle it's hiding he's shy so guys i hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't and i will see you all in the next one also check out daily harvest down below and make sure you get your discount see you in the next one